Welcome back. Again, I'm Dr. A.M. Columbus, Junior President and uh, Dean of Aspen Christian College and Seminary. Uh, we are discussing again the African Christian History class and the teachings and the information that we're sharing with everyone uh, from that class that started just uh, a little over a month ago. And we are excited about some things that we're doing. I'm here sitting with, again, uh, Professor Mason, a uh, uh, Black Studies uh, specialist, and uh, one who studied uh, Black Studies and African Studies and Christian education for many, many years. And we are just excited about a, a venture here that we're going to talk about in just one moment. I wanted to share with uh, Professor Mason and you uh, the reason why our history is so important, and as I uh, stated uh, earlier, I visited with my father and uh, some of his siblings, his younger sister and his brother, and they were all in the world into their 70s and 80s, uh, and this was about 15 years ago. And I learned some things about my own history that I thought was very painful because I knew my grandfather was suffering with uh, uh, alcohol addiction, and my father suffered with it for many years. So I was kind of reluctant to even ask about their past, thinking that it was just so painful for them. But when I began to counsel with them, they began to share with me certain information. Uh, I, I knew then that much was missing in my life. Uh, and I found out that my granddad, who was older than my uh, grandmother by many years, uh, Professor Mason had a whole separate family. Oh, that's great. I, I never knew that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And they, I asked him, I said, why didn't y'all tell me this? They said, well, he wouldn't tell us much about it. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, why was that? Was he ashamed of that family? They said, well... Uh, he had to leave that family because he was threatened by the Ku Klux Klan. Oh, okay, okay. So he had to change his name mm -hmm. and move. Mm -hmm. And he told them not to even mention the name anymore. Oh, my God. And so I, what, it, what I found out was that I had a whole set of kinsmen that were older than they, and that throughout this country, no doubt, I, there's a whole other set of Columbuses, or they may call themselves Qualls. That's not supposed to be mentioned because he was running for his life mm -hmm. because of the clan mm -hmm. that, that he had uh, gotten a scuffle with. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that was a part of history that was hidden, and to this day, it's still somewhat shrouded. Mm -hmm. I, I, I'm saying that to say that many of you may think in terms of Africa as something that is slavery and that is chains and jungle and what have you, but you need to know that there is a lot of richness in Africa that we're missing, and if we don't learn it and learn it real fast, we're going to really be left out, and we must help ourselves by being knowledgeable about what's happening. As we know now, the whole world is trying to understand what's happening in Africa right? because of the Egypt situation, which, by the way, is Africa. Right, right. And our roots come from there, and right below there is a land that's connected with it in biblical times, known as Ethiopia. Right, right. And what do we have planned for Ethiopia? Well, we have a lot planned for Ethiopia. We're just, it's just bubbling over. Yes. You were talking about your history, about your grandfather. I, I, I've written down yes. about my uncle yes. what happened to him, and they didn't run, though. They didn't I run. I'll write a book about it. Anyway, so, but in Ethiopia, we, in the school, we, we kind of parallel whatever happened, what's happened to the Christian church. We also talk about how the, in the Ethiopian church, which was Christian, but the Ethiopian church began way, way back then when Queen of Sheba left Solomon, and that was like 900 years before Christ. Okay. And she, he sat back with her uh, 100 men, and only four of those guys were married. And the rest of them married Ethiopian women, and they taught them the Jewish law. Now, when Queen of Sheba's son went back, when he got 21 years old, he also brought back a lot of the Levites. And when they yes. also brought the, 
the Ark of the Covenant with them and they sell it in Lake Tana. And then during, during the 300 AD, 300 B BC, no, 300 AD after Christ, uh, well, during the, when, when the Queen, Queen Candace unit, okay. he was reading the Bible and what do we mean by this? And he brought the new Christianity back to Ethiopia. They have been studying the Jewish law and all that stuff, you know. But then uh, as the church developed, we had the Ethiopian church developing also. Yes. And the 300 Ethiopian people became new Christians, uh -huh. you know, like the new churches may say. They already had their churches, and they were already being circumcised. They were already being baptized at this time. Mm -hmm. And so the church began to grow during the 300 on up, on up. And during the 600, when the church was being persecuted, persecuted by but Muslim, uh, Jews, and all those people, Yemen, it was the Ethiopian king that, that, the, that, the, that the Pope yes. requested to go help, and he went help, and he rescued the Christian of Yemen. And he destroyed those guys that fighting the Christian, and the Christian had to be having a little, stop being persecuted that much at that time, in the 600. Yes. So all this time, the church of Ethiopia was doing a lot of things, and during the 1200, there was a big thing happening there. The church, the church ethos has been moving all the time, moving, moving, moving. Yes, yes. Growing, growing, back, building, back and forth, back and forth. And we had one of the kings that go to Jerusalem for 13 years. He came back, and the Lord told him to build these churches in Lalabella. Yes. Now, we're going to visit Lalabella. Lalabella is a place in Ethiopia where we got 11 churches dug into the rocks. Dug into the rocks. Then we got other churches like in Oxford where home of Queen, Queen of Sheba, Queen Candace. That era, that we have all these big uh, obliques, and also we have the St. Mary's Church, which we have during the 300 when Ezon became the king of uh, Ethiopia. He got the Ark to come off, off, off of Lake China, out of there, and put it in St. Mary's Church. When we go there, we're going to visit St. Mary's Church. We won't be able to see the Ark. Last guy I heard about when they didn't see the Ark, he didn't come out. They had to drag him out. Yes. So we don't want to see the ark. We don't want to go around. But <laughs> well, we also are going to visit a place called Lake Dana. This is the lake where they had the different islands on there. This is the lake where they had the, the place where they had the ark of the covenant. And they still got places there showing where they had the tabernacle there. We still got that. Yes. The tabernacle there. And then we're going to visit there. And that lake, the, uh, the Blue Nile runs across Lake Lake Dana and go along to the uh, go on to Egypt. Then we're going to visit Addis Ababa. <laughs> which is the capital now, then we're going to visit Gorna. Gorna is with the ancient capital of the Ophi during the 1600s. Yes. There you got so many churches in Gorna. And we got, in, in that area, we got churches built just like the temple. Got a big old pool, like the Solomon pool, you know? Yes. You'll be yes. able to see that, you see. And they have a celebration there where you see those guys, they be dancing like David dancing. They be getting down because there's that celebration. And so we're going to see a lot of exciting things in Ethiopia when we go. All right. What, what Professor Nace is talking about is our college, Aspen Christian College Seminary, is sponsoring a tour of Ethiopia. And we want to send you information about it. If you will just call us or email us or respond to this YouTube, we'll be glad to send you this uh, brochure concerning our tour in Ethiopia that will begin March uh, in March the 19th through the 27th of 2012. So you have plenty of time to get your monies together. Uh, it'll be a, a round trip tour for as low as $2,898. Uh, almost 10 days, nine days travel. Uh, many things are included, lodging, air, breakfast, meals, many amenities. Uh, believe me, this is a, 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 a knockout. This, this is a tremendous opportunity that you can't afford to miss if you want to see some of the things that he's talking about was featured on a CNN broadcast not too long ago. Uh, matter of fact, it was so well uh, documented and reviewed until many, many uh, historians now say that this uh, place, uh, these places, these churches that were dug out of these rocks, are so uh, magnificent, they call it the eighth wonder of the world. Yes, 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 yes. You know, they, they still wondering how they did it. Just, right. like, just like they have the wonder about the pyramids, mm -hmm. there's a wonder about these churches. Right. They were actually sculpted out of rock. 
and we, we, we have pictures of these things, and we'd like to share some of the YouTubes that have pictures of these uh, fantastic events and we are uh, places, and we're looking forward to it. I'm looking forward. To oh it. yes, I am too. I am too. I am too. You know that there are a lot of uh, exciting things in, going on now in Ethiopia. You know. Yes. The museum there, you may be see the, the the you know that the skeleton of the Lucy. You know the oldest. Yes. Yes. Right. The oldest living you know. right. Oldest, oldest skeleton, skeleton right. of a human being. Got yes. That, that there, you see, and we'll maybe see the places where where you know where we know humans started. You know. Yes. You know. And like the Bible would say, Behold Ethiopia, for the man was born there, you know. So we will be able to look at the place where man was born. So we're very excited about that. But well, we invite you to uh, respond to this uh, YouTube by letting us know what you think and sharing with you. We want you to join in <coughs> these classes. We'll have another class starting in the spring of this year of 2011. And those of you that didn't start in the winter can start in the spring session. We want to build another class from it. These are college accredited uh, classes, and you're working towards uh, degree programs. We invite you to come and be a part of us and just learn as much as you can. Christianity is a part of Africa and has been for thousands of years now, and we want to spread the news about our Christian movement that started in Africa. It's not an import from Europe. Uh, we are not uh, Christians just because we were slaves. No. But Christianity actually began in many ways uh, in that region. And you all that have read your Bibles know that uh, God miraculously took away Philip to minister to an Ethiopian eunuch right. who was actually uh, an authority and he was reading scriptures, and that tells you how the church was there, because he was okay. reading scriptures, yes. and he was from Africa, mm -hmm. and Philip went and witnessed to him so he could carry back the Christian message back to Africa that would really just kind of fulfill their expectations, which started, like you say, even with uh, the Queen of Sheba, right, right, mm -hmm. who brought back much information about the Jewish culture right. and how the tribe of Levi and the tribe of Dan and the mm -hmm. tribe of, of, of Ephraim and Manasseh was born in Africa. Mm -hmm. it really, all the tribes were born in Africa mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because Israel became a nation in Africa. Right. They, they were Africa. not a nation until mm -hmm. they actually went down to Africa and then flourished there, uh, went down there 70 strong and come out over 2 million strong. So they had African roots. Our history goes back there, and we have much to learn and much that we are proud of. And we look forward to our next uh, session with you. And so just keep tuning in. Oh, yeah. You'll love it.